A Prina? Is this some kind of joke? It's entirely serious. The offer of marriage to his son, Cameron, in exchange for money. Are you trying to buy me like a toy with this fake chap? I have things to do. Excuse me. You have three days to think about it. If you change your mind, please call me. Continue to feed an extra mouth. Either you start paying rent or get out. But I. You're not welcome here anymore. Yeah. But why? How dare you ask? You no longer deserve to be a part of our family. Moving out of here is just a matter of but time. It's impossible. This is my house. My mother left it to me in her will. <laughs> Shameless. You brought shame on us four years ago by getting pregnant by a stranger. And we haven't recovered from the disgrace. What right do you have to demand anything from the family now? At least, let me say goodbye to my grandma. Get lost! Brenda, you're only 18. You must get rid of this child. This is my child, and its life matters. Then? You must get out of this house. Where, where is my child? The child died in the accident. How fortunate that your bastard was born dead. I will take care of his burial. Losing my virginity to a stranger and getting pregnant at 18 were the two biggest mistakes of my life. However, the third and worst was yet to come. It happened amid the party and I didn't even see his face. The stranger was remarkably confident and his muscular physique made me feel safe. That night, we were both driven by primal instinct. His voice was husky. What happened next changed my life forever. I had no clue that this one-night stand on my 18th birthday was coming back to haunt me. Are you Miss Strong? Who are you? I'm Mr. Tripp. John Tripp. I'm a lawyer. What can I help you with, Mr. Tripp? I've come on behalf of my client, Mr. Richard Kent. He has a business proposition for you. I couldn't believe it. The Kent family were famous. I didn't know them personally, but their business and immense wealth were constantly in the news and on social media. Hello, and John? How's Grandma? Is she okay? Right now, her vitals are stable, but the overall condition has worsened. If you don't perform the surgery soon, I'm afraid she won't last much longer. Then perform the surgery immediately.
That's too expensive. Do you have 300,000 in your pocket? I'm sorry. If you're so rich, pay for the ambulance, for the ward, and the medications first. Or your grandma will be thrown out under the street. But the surgery... Uncle White, you, you, you have savings, right? If you pay for the surgery, I'll reimburse you. I promise, just... <laughs> <laughs> That's outrageous. Greedy, ungrateful Red. Our savings are earmarked to help our son pay for his wedding. Huh. Keep your grubby mitts off our money. Mm -hmm. But... I knew you would call back. I'm ready to make a deal if the bank confirms that your check is valid. I was very nervous about meeting with the lawyer. What will I say? Should I explain why I had changed my mind? I felt very humiliated, but I needed the money. Mr. Tripp. Miss Strong. Please familiarize yourself with the contract. You have to sign here. I didn't read anything. I thought about my grandmother who was still in the hospital awaiting surgery. I needed money immediately. The agreement included marriage to Cameron Kent. Are you sure you don't want to read the terms and conditions first? I didn't believe that this agreement was real, but I also didn't understand how the lawyer was trying to deceive me. In the end, it didn't matter anymore. Very well. This is still the one million dollar deposit from yesterday. If there is nothing else, I'll be going. Mr. Tripp, uh, may I ask, why did you choose me for this arrangement? I'm only responsible for Richard Kent's affairs. I don't ask for reasons. The lawyer left, and I was looking at the check in my hand. Have all my problems been solved? But the biggest challenges were yet to come. After smoothly receiving the money at the bank, I hurried back to the hospital and paid for my grandmother's surgery. As soon as the payment was made, the operation started. The waiting hours felt like an eternity. Grandma, you're awake. I was so worried about you. I'm sorry, dear. I didn't want to scare you. I was worried about you, too. Why did you move out so suddenly? I... I just wanted... to be closer to work. But that's all. So abruptly? Grandma, it's, it's okay. Like, I rented um, an apartment with my colleague from work, and uh, there is heating, hot water, and, and very convenient. And why don't you move in with me? <sighs> yeah, I have to go to work. How will you have time to take care of me? I can hire two nurses to look after you. You can't afford that level of care. Don't worry. Everything will be fine with me. I knew how cold and heartless Aunt June and Uncle Wyatt were, so I invited my grandmother to live with me. But how to explain the source of my new income? I didn't even realize it yet. Back at the hotel, I was trying to find more information about the Kent family when someone knocked on the door. Come in. We're here to hang over the marriage certificate. I've already arranged everything myself, and we have all the necessary signatures. If it was the real Cameron Kent, perhaps he was too busy to collect the marriage certificate in person. 
None of it made sense, but I had signed the agreement, spent the money and couldn't back out now. Okay, and what are we gonna do now? Packing your things. I was overwhelmed with hundreds of thoughts. Would I really leave with Cameron Kent? Would I finally meet him? Who is he? The rich and famous man or some wannabe? Who was I actually married to? I felt oddly torn between nervous excitement and the surreal feeling of not knowing where I was going to live and with whom. I scanned the property searching for Cameron Kent although I wouldn't mind delaying meeting with my expected husband a little longer. Good day to you, madam. My name's Albert the butler. I will help you settle in. Hi. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Albert? Where is Mr... Mr. Ken, madam, is away on a business trip. He will return in a few days. May I assist with your luggage? This mansion was built according to the latest trend by designers in California. Have a look. Walking through this modern house, I couldn't help but plunge into romantic dreams. The walls, furniture, and even the colors around evoked images of a happy family life of luxury and love. Could Cameron Kent be not only my husband on paper, but also the love of my life? Could we spend beautiful evenings drinking wine and warming each other? Please, madam, make yourself at home. Thank you, thank you, Albert. You're so kind, and this place is just magnificent. <laughs> Normally. I don't allow myself such a familiarity. But you're damn right, man. <laughs> In just a few days, I had adapted to a life of luxury. The driver took me to and from work and to the hospital. I enjoyed the fresh air and beautiful views which gave me inspiration. Besides Albert the butler and Lynn the cook housekeeper, no one else resided in the mansion. I enjoyed living there and hoped to stay indefinitely. I hoped that Cameron and I would get along and, who knows, even fall in love as a real husband and wife. I felt silly for fantasizing about it, but in a place like this, it was hard not to. Ma'am. Who are you? Mr. Kent, I'm... Um... Sir, this is Miss Brenda Strong, your wife. Are you telling me that I'm married? Why didn't I know that I was married? You didn't know about the marriage arrangement? Mr. Tripp, he... he told me... like, we were talking... Look he... at me! Get out! Sir, your father arranged. Don't make me repeat myself. I'll be in my study. I'm really sorry, madam. I was so sad because all my romantic dreams about Cameron Kent had come to naught. Don't worry about me, I'm... I'm gonna be okay. As I walked out with a suitcase of my things, my stomach tightened. What has I gotten myself into? Cameron didn't even know about our marriage. What a shame! I felt a deep sense of guilt for not reading the contract 
and did not know how to terminate it now. I had just walked away from the door when a familiar voice answered me. Where do you think you're going? Are you trying to breach our contract? Albert told me what happened. That's no reason for you to give up. We have a legal contract. No, no, I know. It's just, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to breach anything willingly. I just... Cameron hates me. Hatred? Is that the reason? Fine. So, give us back the compensation and leave. What... What kind of compensation are you talking about? According to the terms of our agreement, breaching the contract within the first three years obliges you to pay double the amount of money you received. It was written in the agreement in tiny letters. I don't have that amount of money. What am I supposed to do? Put in the effort and fight. You're a smart woman, Brenda. So you must know that dealing with a beauty like you is the hardest thing for a man. The lawyer walked away. I had to understand this by now. There was no way out. I couldn't afford to breach the contract, but I also couldn't ignore my grandmother's illness. So, even if Cameron hated me, I had to do everything in my power to stay. The following day, I made a plan. I would change my attitude and try to win Cameron over. I was already up to my neck in the situation, and the best thing I could do was make the most of it. That morning, Cameron came downstairs and seeing me, he became more serious. Alfred, do you know where is my... Hi, good morning. I made you some breakfast, so please, enjoy. Why is she still here? I'm your wife? No. Where else can I go if I'm not here? Uh, maybe you don't know it, but we even have a real marriage certificate. Do you think I would care about that? But you cannot deny it. You are my husband. I am your wife. Well, legally. It's true, sir. As far as I know, your father keeps your marriage certificate. There was anger in Cameron's eyes, but I didn't react. I had to take care of my grandmother and find a way to improve my relationship with Cameron. But how? Even though he hated me, I couldn't give up. came without warning. What brings you here today? I need my marriage certificate. Right now. Right now? And what will you do with it so urgently, sir? I'm gonna get a divorce. Very well. So, have you seen your wife yet? This is irrelevant to the case, Dad. I thought you'd like her. You were wrong. Okay, no problem. Jeffrey, bring the certificate, please. Get the divorce that you're right. You know you're not my only son, Cameron, right? And if you don't get married this year... I know that. And you know what I am. Right. You know... Maybe I shouldn't get a divorce right away. <laughs> right away. <laughs> Surely not. Nothing in this life should be done in a hurry. Thank you for the advice I didn't ask for. And stay away of my business in the future, all right? I think it's time for me to meet my daughter-in-law. 
Could you arrange this, please? Certainly, sir. After Cameron left, the tense atmosphere in the villa dissipated. I felt like I could finally breathe freely. Suddenly, I heard ringing among the things Cameron left on the couch. I know I shouldn't have done it, but I answered the call. Hi, who are you looking for, little one? Daddy, is Daddy home? Hi, Brenda here. Hope you are loving Love Bargain. Keep following us as we release a new episode of Season 1 daily on YouTube. You can jump the queue and unlock all seasons of the audio series by installing the Pocket FM app now. Just click on the link in the description.